So, dudes, welcome back to the Gregor Gaming Experience. We're going to be talking about the relatively new Valorant Agent Chamber, the off-angle holding extraordinaire. And if my French fans don't like my pronunciation, you can kiss my croissant. Because it's time for you to look inward and ask yourself the real questions. Is Portuguese just France Spanish? Chamber has had enough of your French jokes, and he's here to remind you of what France's actual win-loss ratio is. He's here to do it with some space-age weapons that would surely get Ian McCollum's attention. Hey guys, and thanks for tuning in to another episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we have a sniper rifle from the Valorant Protocol. Now, this is very unconventional uh, in terms of French weapons, but Chamber is a sentinel, which means he is most effective playing defensively, anchoring a particular part of the map on defense and holding flanks for teammates on attack. One sentinel at the very least is a common thing to expect on a team in a competitive game, although a dedicated smoker and flash character usually take precedent if you don't have those already. Killjoy, as of making this video, still provides, in my opinion, the highest floor in terms of performance among sentinels, because her flank turret can passively spot flankers from long distances, something unique to her. But Chamber is still a man of business and offers things for your economy that no other agent can. If the French are so bad at combat, why are their guns so hot? Checkmate, atheists. Chamber's default ability he gets without paying money for is a teleport that sounds a bit complicated at first, but makes more sense in practice. Place a teleport out here! The basic idea is that Chamber deploys two pillars. When deploying the first pillar, you'll get an indication in blue of the maximum radius at which the second pillar can be deployed. Placing the second pillar completes the teleport link. If you're in the effective radius of pillar two, seen on your map, when you hit the teleport button, you teleport to the first pillar. If you're in the effective radius of pillar one, you teleport to the second one. 20 second cooldown. Except when you're using these in the prep phase. It has a three second cooldown in the prep phase. That way, you can get yourself onto cheeky off angles without having to waste your cooldown. Just make sure to use it before the prep phase ends, or you might have to take some fall damage to get off of your high ground. The range these things have is pretty big. Not that you have to use all of it. That's the beauty of it. The range on them is usually large enough for you to maneuver around the site in whatever way you want, allowing you to vanish when it gets too hot. Okay, I'm not surrendering. It's a tactical retreat. Okay, get it right. Tips and tricks, the top 10 tips and tricks. Put teleporters up here. Vent a teleporter back there. Peek and then hit the button and then fucking uh, bye. If you think it's worth the risk, you can wait for the teleport to proc again, then go for a cheeky flank on the site. The teleport doesn't work instantaneously. There are a couple of frames where your character changes color that you can get shot during, all right? Fighting game players, you know what I'm talking about. But it's still pretty fucking quick. It can let you pull off some aggressive plays that other Sentinels can't get away with. Kind of like how Jet or Reyna have oh instant God, peel. Genius. Except this time, it's on a Sentinel. You're a genius! Now you have no excuse to not get kills on support characters. So, go into the firing range and, uh, let me know how that goes. You'll know you're in the effective range of the teleporter when the sides of your screen get all Art Deco glowy. Obviously, enemies can see your beacons, so if you're not careful, they can camp them without you knowing it. Or, put a trap on it. So if that is a distinct possibility, probably don't use it! No, right? Be smart. These pillars can also be destroyed with a couple of shots. So what happens if you need to rotate? Well, you can recall these things from a certain radius instantly, but you have to wait for the cooldown to redeploy them. Just make sure you remember to do this for your retake and pick up both of them. Otherwise, if you want to use them again, you'll pull out your credit card and get declined. It's also commonly known that the enemy team has a sixth sense, allowing them to tell exactly when you rotate away from the site. So try not to rotate too quickly because then you can give up site control easily. It's also a commonly known fact that the enemy team will also never push the site that you're on as a sentinel and will five-man rush your teammate's site on the other side of the map every single round. So, you know, not a lot of people know that, just do with that information what you will. I can make a video about how to use the teleporter, but just try to do as many wild things with it as you can until you get an idea for how it works. On certain maps, like Haven, Chamber can traverse sections that would take a significant amount of time compared to his peers. Don't put your teleporters all on the same elevation, on like an elevated angle. Don't put all of them on like a heaven angle, because if you drop the heaven angle, then you can't use them anymore. The teleport is useful for intel gathering. You can run out for a peek, and if the gunfight is, uh, uh you know, not exactly winnable, uh, just hit E and peace out. Remember, it's not surrendering, it's a tactical retreat. You can also use teleporters to traverse crosses that might be held by an op in most circumstances, like mid on ascent. Wee wee bagot fucks, big dick chamber, cucks all of France with the big iron on his hip, and he does that with one hand, because he doesn't give a merit. Basically, chamber buys a bullet for 100 creds a pop, and he can buy up to eight in a given round. 
This means in the first round, if you buy half armor, you get four of these bullets, like Mishta. Headshots are insta-kills, and it takes three body shots to take down a fully armored opponent. That means the money you lose is directly related to how ass your aim is. You lose ammo, and you lose money. Kind of like real life, because that shit's expensive. In all seriousness, it's a really cheap sheriff slash guardian type of gun. It's pretty cool. Eight bullets, plus a nice zoom in scope. Aim for the head, and get that one tap. Theoretically, for 400 creds, you can take down somebody who spent 3,900 on a rifle and full armor. That's kind of a big deal. During eco rounds, my usual go-to is four rounds of the big iron and light armor. That's an arbitrary number of bullets. You can pick whatever you want. Your mileage may vary. But whenever I play chamber, I pay a great deal of attention to my creds compared to my teammates. MLG pros might have better insight than me, but my general rule of thumb with chamber is that I just don't bother with eco guns. The eco gun is the big iron. That's my eco gun. If you have decent aim, you can frag out at a pretty economically efficient rate and basically be your teammate's personal arms dealer. What the fuck? In a video game. Obviously, you know, buy a rifle with your teammates when you're supposed to, but the interesting dynamic, economy-wise, comes into play with your alt, which I'll get to later. Chamber won't sue you over his trademark like Take-Two Interactive. It's a little spinny ball he puts on the ground that does a little trick if bad guys get too close to it. When enemies enter its effective radius, there's a short wind-up period where the trap will inevitably throw a slowing field at an enemy, provided that it's not shot before then. The trap gathers intel even if the trap doesn't detonate. And, if you put it in spots difficult to shoot out, it can stop a bad guy right in their tracks. Amen, Interesting things to note is that it works vertically as well, and you can see a line indicating the elevation well, at which the enemy is tagged. Like any other sentinel, you should aim to get your util down as quickly as you can before the prep phase ends, including the traps and the teleporters. But sometimes, you can throw a trap out in a lane to gather intel too. The traps are particularly important because they give you an avenue to swing and potentially get a kill, or at the very least provide a little bit of time delay to allow your teammates to retake. The slow field is pretty big, and it lasts a significant enough amount of time for your teammates to react and do something. In some instances, just having a trap on a lane will be enough to deter an individual lurker from pushing entirely. On attack, they serve as useful flank watch tools. Put them behind sharp corners so they can't be seen until somebody rounds them. If you put them out in the open, they'll easily get shot. Not like you can't pocket one for an occasional corner peek. Okay. Typical sentinel stuff with your traps. Put them on flanks for attack, put them at entrances onto the site, and mix them up occasionally to make them more difficult to get rid of on defense. Chambers Alt, the real big iron, Space Cannon 5000, is an op that's even more op than the actual op. The main drawing point of this ability is its low cost of free 99. The alt comes with five shots, as opposed to the reloading capabilities of the conventional op. Seven alt points. You would think it's basically the same thing, it's not. The laser op has some distinct differences. The laser op kills with any direct hit, including to the legs, and it will leave a considerable mark on anybody it strikes through walls. What makes it a powerful defensive tool, though, is that it creates a slow field, much like his viable traps, at the position of enemies he kills with it. So basically, if he gets a shot off on a lane, good freaking luck pushing it. On attack, this is obviously a powerful flank or cross-holding tool as well. If the show stopped there, you could say the free sniper is great on defense, and that's kind of it. But his ability to use a powerful weapon for no cost, along with a viable secondary option that isn't a frenzy, a ghost, or a sheriff, is kind of a big deal. And this is where we get into the meat and potatoes au gratin of Chamber's kit. Chamber's econ game is an X-factor in a typical Valorant match. You can effectively frag out with the sniper or even the heavy pistol at basically no cost to you and put a serious dent in the enemy's economy while also giving your teammates guns the next round if you were already doing well cash-wise. Anytime I can help it, when I'm ulting next round, if I have a teammate that died last round, I'll throw them my rifle and alt at a minimal cost. This aspect of Chamber's gameplay is important because without it, other Sentinels contribute a little bit more. Killjoy has area denial, crowd control, intel gathering. Cypher has crowd control, intel, and vision denial. Sage has crowd control, vision denial to an extent, plus the added bonus of healing and rezzing. Chamber's got crowd control and a teleport. Again, I don't want to give off the wrong idea by this logic. Reyna is a bad character because all she has is blinds, and Phoenix has flashes, area denial, and vision denial. But Reyna's got a much higher pick rate in comp. What Chamber brings to the table is the ability to take fights and maneuver the map in ways no other Sentinel can, and he can make sure your teammate's econ game is solid. Chamber is a great agent for people with the aim who want to play to that strength, but don't want to give up the util deficit that comes with playing a duelist usually. If you've already got some smokes and flashes, Chamber can fit into pretty much any team comp. I can't think of maps where he's necessarily bad, however, I think Killjoy might have him beat on Breeze just because the turret is more useful on a map that open. Remember to use your traps and experiment with that teleport as much as you can, and make Ian McCollum proud 
with that space age French sniper rifle. Nice. Holy shit, Greg. Oh, Ace.